morning hello 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 good morning everybody i hope you can see me um hopefully you can see that i'm here hello good morning what's <laughs> oh somebody has said hello whoever this first person is that i can't see um there's so many people here um i can't see who it is Good morning. Um, I will come back into the comments and check in a bit. Uh, Facebook is really funny when you use StreamYard. If you haven't used it before, you have to um, go in and click on the little um, message in the main group, in the main post, not on this live feed in the main post, and give StreamYard permission to see your name okay so if you haven't done that yet it won't show your name and you'll be able to see that's why i don't know if you can see it um it'll just say facebook user so um i will go back into the comments once i finish this and i'll be able to see the very first person on the list name and say who that was um because it's really difficult for me to see but good morning everyone glad to see you're all here there's so many loads and loads and loads and loads of hellos 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 i can see a few different names popping up so i'm not going to say good morning to everyone by name i am at my mum's so it's a bit of a change of backdrop thank you michelle for telling me it was kate thank you okay so for those that don't know me i am victoria kennedy this is my grow your group live three-day challenge i am a business coach and i work with women just like yourselves who are running a business and I help them to figure out all of the business stuff and giving them more time to focus on the things that they are passionate about, like their families and their hobbies and non-social media related stuff, which tends to take up everybody's time. So that's what I do. Um, I am currently at my mum's waiting for a hairdresser to come and sort my hair out. So it's not my usual work environment. Um, and I've got my laptop balanced on some cushions. So apologies for the wobbliness of everything today. So I'm going to jump straight in because I've got lots to cover and I really don't want this to go on for much more than half an hour because your time is so precious just as long as mine. Um, what I'm going to be talking to you about. So the challenge is three days. Day one, which is today, is all about attraction, purpose and promise. And I'll explain all of that in a second. Day two, we're going to be focusing on interaction and engagement, so content and what to put and how to interact and how to grow that engagement through your content. And day three is going to be all about growth and retaining, so how to grow your group, how to attract new members, but then how to retain the members that are in your group and continue to build them as an engaged audience. And from that will come sales, okay? So let's start with today. I should just say that I'll go through everything. I'll do the little bit of training for you. Every day there'll be some, there'll be a, a template, which I know some of you have had some problems downloading. Don't worry, if you really, really can't download it, feel free to PM me um, at Victoria Kennedy, not my business um, page, because the messages just don't always come through. And I will email you the templates. However, you should, it is tricky, I know, because it's a PDF, it downloads, if you're doing it on your phone, it downloads into the file section, it doesn't like automatically pop up on your screen, it is on your phone, it's just hidden. Um, and same on your laptop, when you download it, it'll download into your recently downloaded files, it doesn't automatically open up on your screen. So if you're having trouble with the templates, check those places um, and then just message me and I can email it to you. Every day there's a template to help you have some focus and to help you um, know how to implement some of what we talk about into your actual group if you've already got a Facebook group. There'll also be a little mini task every day for you to do um, and then to come back into the group and kind of show us how you've done it um, and there will be prizes for those people who do some of that. 
as well. Um, I want to try and keep it as fun and interactive because the more you actually implement, there's no point in doing this training and just watching these videos and then going away and hoping that it all helps you to actually implement what you're being taught in order for it to actually grow your group and grow your engagement. Okay, so let's get on with day one. Um, hello, everyone who's just joining. You might notice that the screen is bobbing around. Um, my laptop keeps sliding off the pile of cushions that I've got, so apologies. Okay, so here we go. We're going to go straight in with day one, attraction, purpose, and promise. So what do I mean? I mean, how do we attract people to our group? What is the attraction? Okay, so we have a group. So does everybody else on Facebook. What is the attraction? What's the purpose of our group? And what promise? What are we promising those people who come and join our group? And what are we promising ourselves in terms of putting our energy into our group? Okay. So for those of you that don't know, the difference between a Facebook group and a Facebook page, I get asked this so much, and it's really important that you consider this. If you haven't yet got a Facebook group and you're thinking, what's the point? Why? What I need you to know, okay, a Facebook group gets more engagement even though we still want more on top but than a page you're going to get more engagement you're going to get more reach that means more people organically are going to see your page it's going to be put in front of more people shown in front of on more people's timelines um, and it also is a kind of proven fact that if you create a community where people feel safe and nurtured, then they're more likely to convert into somebody who buys from you. A Facebook page is kind of like your shop window. So your page, I say this so many times, and if you've heard me speaking before, you'll be rolling your eyes probably right now. Your Facebook page is your shop window. It's the place that people are scrolling past and they might see and stop. Okay, and it's kind of like showing off your wares. It's telling a little bit about what you do, showing your best bits, showing your testimonial, showing your best product photo, showing your best um, bits of knowledge about your industry. But your Facebook group is the place they go when they step inside that shop, okay? So they've been attracted by the shop window of your Facebook page. They want to know more. They want to get to know you more. So they step inside your shop. They come into your Facebook group. And just like a shop, your Facebook group is filled with all different things. There's different selections. There's different areas inside your group. Think of there's also like um, it's almost like having shelves for people to go and choose things from, like the unit section of a group, the place you can store all different snippets of information. That's like the shelving section of your shop where they can go and choose what they want to um, look at and have a look at different things. If we think about the content that we put into our group, videos, images, memes, polls, that's exactly like having different displays inside a shop. Different people will be drawn to different sections. Some people go into Marks and Spencers and head straight for the food hall, and that's where they like to go first. Other people go into Marks and Spencers and are really drawn by looking at their beautiful array of knitwear and they like it all folded up on the shelves. We operate in the same way just because it's an online space. Our brains work in the same way. We're attracted in. And once we're in there, we want to find the part of what's inside that group that resonates with us and that attracts us. So if everything inside your group looks the same, you're always displaying your goods in the same way. You're always using text and an image. People are going to get bored and are not going to want to stay very long inside your shop there's not much on your shelves there's nothing in your unit section or your files or your photos people are not going to stay and hang around they're going to get bored okay just like you would if you went into a shop so the more you think of it in those terms the easier it will be for you to understand how to organize your content and how to vary your content okay so now we know the difference between a page and a group and you all hopefully understand the benefit of having a group. You've got a captive audience in some respect. They've chosen to come inside. They want to be there. They've had to click on a, um, a button to join your group. OK, that's an active thing. If someone else has invited them into the group, it's slightly different because they don't always know they've been invited. But once they realise they've been invited, they could leave. 
if what's inside isn't kind of attracting them. So people have chosen to be there. So once they're, you know, how do we make them choose to be there? There's thousands upon thousands upon thousands of Facebook groups now. There's a Facebook group for everything, which is fantastic because it means that as business owners, we're evolving. Everybody's realizing that you need a group. And that's brilliant. But what will make people come to your group and not somebody else's? How can you attract people to be with you in your community? But also, how can you attract the right people? OK, because I just want to focus on that for a second. Sometimes we get lost on social media with the metrics of wanting the numbers game. So um, needing X amount of followers, uh, come and join my group because I want to get more people in there. We kind of fall into this sense of believing if we get more people in our group, it's better, more people. But actually, what's better is to have everybody that's in the group engaged in the group. There is very little point in having 10,000 group members, but just the same 10 people comment on your posts because that's not helping you in terms of Facebook metrics, okay? The way the Facebook algorithm works is that the people who are in your group need to engage in your group because that tells Facebook that your group is, is like um, interesting, it's viable, and that it's wanted by the whole Facebook community. If you've got a group with 10,000 people in there and just 10 people are interacting in your group, it's saying to Facebook, most of the people are in there, but nobody really finds it very interesting. So they start to limit the amount of people within your group even that are seeing your content. They pick up really quickly Facebook's algorithms and really react to what is popular, what is engaging, what people are reacting and engaging to and what people are kind of feeding back by liking, sharing, okay? So stop thinking about your group being a space that you need to fill up with loads and loads and loads of people. Think about your group as being the place where you want it focused. Even if there's only 20 people in your group, if all 20 people are interacting, sharing, commenting, liking, creating posts, going live, then that's a really active, engaged, group and Facebook are going to favor that and start to show it organically to other people by showing it. I mean, the little section that they have that says groups like this one, you might notice from your news feed that every now and again, you get a little box come up. And it tells you if you've recently joined a group, it tells you other groups that are like the one you've just joined. Those groups that it's showing you are groups that are engaged and active. And you want to or get your group featured in those because you can't you can't pay to be in those boxes. You can't ask Facebook to put you in those boxes. It shows you, it suggests you to other people based on how interactive and how um, engaged your group is. So we don't want a group full of our friends, our family, people who work in the same industry as us, people who um you know, we all fall into this trap of going on to business pages um, like Follow Friday and sharing our group saying, come and join my group. And you get loads of people come in. They're never good, but they might never buy from you. They're not interested. They've just joined your group in the hope that you'll go back and join their group. And it's just creating this little kind of bubble of people within your group who are not part of your community. They're not your customers. They're not engaging. They're there because it was kind of a join for a join or a like for a like kind of situation, and it's not helping you. So if you've already got a group, one of the very first things to do is go through your group and remove people who you genuinely feel, your mom, your sister, people who are just not your customer base, who are not there because they're going to engage. They're just there because they're supporting your business. Just remove those people because you know, then you can start to get to a place of, of really focusing in on who your customers are and who you want to have in your group. So how do you figure out who your group is for? Because I've said to you, you want to attract people to your group who want to be there. And it's kind of a really, um, in some ways, long winded process that you're going to go through, but you're going to spend some time over the next few days thinking really hard about 
who your group is for, what your group is providing those people, why they might be there, and how you communicate to them, how you tell them that your group exists and that they need to be in your group, okay? Um, one of the other really big things, the traps, I guess, that we fall into is we think that our group is about us. We think that our group is for our business and for us, for us to get people so we can then cultivate that audience and sell to them. And obviously, ultimately it is, but that shouldn't be your own new thought process. Your group isn't a place where you can make sales now you might be thinking ah oh, i remember i did a poll didn't i in this um group last week asking you what's the purpose of your group and if you're in the mindset that the whole purpose of your group is to make sales this is going to be a big shift for you because your group is not for you to make sales that's a byproduct of what might happen almost a benefit of having a group but it's not the primary purpose of your group to make sales because that's when your group becomes about you it becomes about what you need what your business needs and what you want and very quickly you will lose interaction or plummet engagement or plummet membership or plummet because people just get sick of it being all about you they can't relate there's nothing for them to, to hook, hook onto and we're going to talk more about that tomorrow when we talk about engagement and content so getting down to the nitty gritty of who is your group for, okay? You need to think about who, who do you want inside your group? What is the purpose of your group? If, if you've worked with me before, then you'll understand and you should have some element of understanding about who your ideal client is, who your audience, who are you talking to, who you're selling to, okay? And that will help you understand who your group should be for, because that's your your people. Okay, now I know thousands of you in here are Tropic Ladies, and I'm going to make Michelle laugh, because this is a little private joke between Michelle and I, um, that you have to really think carefully and deeply about who you're serving, who you're selling to. It's very tempting <laughs> to say it's for everyone okay reference for tropic ladies if people have skin it doesn't mean that they are going to be i can't even get any more michelle without a straight face because of you doesn't mean they're going to be your ideal client okay just um you need to think even deeper you need to go even focus in even more try not to think my group's for everybody anybody can be in my group it can be for anybody because i want everyone to buy my products that's not how it works. You need to really kind of think carefully about exactly who is the person, what is the problem they have, who are you talking to, who's going to be inside your group. Because if you just try to throw a net out and go, it's for everybody, anyone can come in, then you're just so um, nondescript that people can't identify with what it is you're doing. So obviously I have this joke with Tropic Ladies. If you just say, I, anyone who's got skin can buy my products. Yes, they can, of course they can. And you're not gonna turn away somebody just because they're not your exact ideal customer. But in terms of marketing and content and promoting your products, if you just try and shout out, I'm pro anyone with skin can buy this, then people will just think, oh, she doesn't mean me, she means that other person. She doesn't, it's not me she's talking to. You need to really focus in so people can go, oh, that's me, that's exactly me, that's my problem. She's talking to me, she means me, okay? So figuring out who your group is for is part of that. And you'll see on the template, one of the things that I've asked you is who do you work with? Who, who buys from you? So you can look at your previous customers. Is there something that's the same? about them all are they all women are they all busy mums are they all stressed out career women are they all retirees is there something about the people who bought from you previously that that makes them um, a common denominator so to speak between them all so you're looking for that who who has the problem that you solve so for me i work with women running businesses, predominantly mums, okay, because the problems that I solve are helping people get their time back. 
They help people become confident in their own abilities within their business and get their time back. And the people who tend to be the busiest and have the least amount of time are mums running businesses. So that's who I want um, to buy from to be buying for me that's who I want in my group I could obviously say anybody running a business male female any age are going to have the problem I have but I don't want anybody in my group I just want those specific group of people because that's who I'm going to be talking to so that's what you're thinking of who is who you're trying to attract and really really focus in okay because obviously anyone can buy your products but your group is your place to grow your special community, to grow your particular corner of your industry, okay? Don't be tempted to just go with anybody. Be really specific here. Think, I only want these certain people in my group because I'm going to nurture them and build a space for them. And that's what you're thinking. So part of your task today is to go through um, and do that brainstorm. Who's bought from you in the past? Whose problems do you solve? Who do you want to attract into your group? And then start to think, okay, so what is the problem that those people are having? What will they need? Why would, so for me, why would women, mums running businesses want to join my group? What problems do they have that I could offer them a solution to? Most mums, just like yourselves, running groups, um, running businesses, want answers. They want social media tips. They want time management tips. They don't want to feel alone because running your own group, can, um, your own business can feel lonely. So I provide a space where they can get answers to those questions. They can get social media help. They can get time management tips. They can get mindset tips so they don't feel alone. They feel confident and they feel valid in their business. So what is the going to, that's your purpose. What is your group for? Okay, if you're, um, I know I'm using Tropic Reference a lot and it's because there's lots of Tropic ladies in the group, but it's also another easy one to, to tap into. What's the purpose of your group? Okay, why are you offering your group to people buying Tropic? So if your ideal customers, if most of the people who buy off you other your school mum friends, so you're you're looking at mums with young children. Why would they want to be in a Facebook group? What would they about skincare? What things would they want to know? What's the purpose? Is it to make their lives simpler? So show them how to use the products quickly. Is it to demonstrate the product so they don't have to sift through all the information and decide what product they need? What is the purpose? What are you going to give them in your group that they can help them really quickly, okay? So that's what you're thinking about, your purpose of your group. And the last bit is thinking about your promise, okay? So your promise is this idea of, why have you personally set up your group? What's your goal for your business? Because I talk about this a lot, time management. If you're trying to add time, um, you know, your time is precious. If you're trying to streamline everything you do, because we all know social media just is all consuming. Everybody, all of my clients kind of um, talk to me about the fact that social media takes so long. We're planning the content. How do I make it so it's quick? I'm sick of spending hours and hours on my phone. What you don't want is to create um, more work for yourself. So what's the point of your group? What are you trying to do? with your group this is your little bit where it is about you but this really communicated okay so remember it's going to be a very long game to create to turn your group members into your customers so don't make your sole purpose of your group to make sales because you're going to feel disheartened when it takes so long because it is a long game think more about okay maybe my group is a place where i increase my expertise in the industry it's a place where I let people know I'm an expert in my industry maybe it's a place where I build confidence so people who come into my group need to build their confidence and they cut that's the whole purpose so think about what is the purpose for your for you and your business and then think about what's the purpose for the people joining your group why are they there what do they want from from your group? Are they joining their, your group 
just because, you know, it's another group to join. I doubt it. They're probably joining your group because they want something from you and try and home in what is it they want from you because that will help you tomorrow when you're thinking about how to create content. Okay, so two more things now to think about and then I'm going to wrap up. So really practical things that you need to start thinking about. The cover image on your group and the description and name of your group are vital for attracting the right people. They're really, really important things. And this is the extra task that you're going to have to do today and report back to the group and show us what you've done and get feedback. OK, so really importantly, your cover image. This is the banner at the top. When people come into your group, it's right at the top of the group. You'll see I created one for um, this Grow Your Group Challenge. You'll see that it's got my imagery on there, it's got my business colours on there, and it's got the, the font that I use for my business on there, and it's got the name of the group really clearly, so people can look at it and see what it's about. It doesn't mention me particularly anywhere in there, because it's not about me. So you'll see that Again, if some of you have come across from being in the Clarity Club, which is my usual business group that I run for women, run, I have for women running businesses, it's not called Victoria's Clarity Club. It's not called Victoria's Business Group. It's not called Victoria's anything because it's not about me. Your group name needs to speak to the people who are going to join the group. Your group name is about them. That so they need to read the name of your group and identify with it and think that's me that describes me or that is for me okay if it's got your name in there so i know again lots of you tropic ladies have you know kerry's vips or um uh, susan's skincare vips it, that's not about the people who are in there that's about you and they're not going to see that new people who might be having a problem thinking, oh, I really can't want to find a group on Facebook. I know that Tropics say you have to be careful to include your name. I know, I know. Um, you all just need to go back and shout at Katrina and tell her that it's not good for social media. Uh, it's not helpful at all. I know that it's part of what you have to do, but it's not helpful at all to you because creating a group is about people feeling that they belong and that they identify and that it's for them and solving their problems. So having a group that's got your name is saying it's about you. And it's also quite spammy in terms of sales. It's like people can see through that. So having such and such, you know, Kerry's Sorry, I'm picking on people called Kerry. It's just a name that keeps coming to my mind. Kerry's VIPs. Um, it, it feels spammy. It feels salesy. It feels like you're just trying to get them in there to sell to them. And it's a really outdated model of using social media. What you need to think about is how can I create a name for my group that people look at? So somebody is going on to social media thinking I've got an issue and I need to find a group that I can belong to. And they're going to probably search their issue. So people, for me, if they're a mum in business, they're going to be searching mum's business groups. OK, and there's thousands of those. So I didn't want to just call it mum's business group because I'd get lost in the plethora of, of groups. So hopefully when they search that, they'll, my group will come up because those words are in my description but they're not in my name of my group. And they'll be able to identify. They'll be able to see it's called the Clarity Club and it's for women who've turned their passion into profits. So if they're thinking, okay, I need clarity, that's what I'm looking for. I'm looking to get clarity and focus. I'm a woman running a business and I've turned something I was passionate about into earning me money. So that name of that group is going to resonate with them. If I just called it Victoria's Business Group, or Victoria's business mums, they might have scrolled on by and thought, well, I don't know who Victoria is. I don't know. Yes, I run a business, but I don't, that doesn't speak to me. I don't know what this is for. Don't worry about needing your business name in so people can find it, because again, it's not about you. 
you're not people are not going to be coming automatically we're growing our audience organically remember so we're not thinking people are going to come in and want to know find your business they're thinking they've got a problem they need a solution to and you're providing that solution so remember to try and make it removed from being about you and to make it much more about identifying with them so how can you create a name for your business that makes people think yes that's what i need and you're so therefore your name needs to talk about what it is you're offering in your group who it's for and what it is you're going to do with them in the group so that's why you need to brainstorm who is my group for how can i drill it down so i don't just say women i don't just say mums i don't just say busy people how can i really kind of drill it down and then how can i make it really clear in some sort of one line or quick phrase what my group is for like this group i called it grow your group i didn't expand because it's basically it this is what this this group you're in right now is is for growing your group growing your facebook group um so think really carefully and what i want you to do is come back into this group i'll create a day one thread and start sharing some name ideas, thinking, OK, this is what I'm thinking of for the name of my group. What do you think, people? People can give you feedback. Does, does it speak to people? This is the purpose. You can say, this is my group. This is my business. This is the industry. This is the purpose of my group. This is the name I'm thinking of. Do you think it resonates? Do you think it says what it does, what it says on the tin, that kind of thing? share some of your group name ideas tropic ladies i think you're going to have to i'm going to speak to michelle after this call and um find out how strict the whole having your name in the group name is because obviously i i'm going to encourage you to stay within your hq's you know terms and conditions because i don't want to get you in any trouble but just think carefully about taking the word tropic out of your group name because remember it's not about all about your products it's about the solution you're offering them um to their problem okay last thing the cover image the image that you put up there some do's and don'ts okay for that image don't use a picture of yourself because it's not about you people are not going to see that picture and think oh yeah okay that that looks enticing think about using some imagery in that banner that you get that you create think about putting an image in there that visually tells people what the group does okay so they can look at it and kind of see straight away relate to it so i mean for, for tropic ladies you could maybe use the tropic logo in that image you could use some pictures of the product but start to think about how can i communicate for my business in i've got this one image to quickly grab people's attention the text on there needs to be the name of your group and your little strap line, your little line, which we're going to work more on in depth in, in day three. So don't don't create your cover image today. We're going to create our cover images on day three, but start to think about what images would I put in there? Go and look at other Facebook groups that you're in. Go and do some research in your industry. Have a look at Facebook groups that exist by your competitors or people in your industry. What imagery are they using on their cover image? What kind of words are they using? How are they describing their groups? Go and do some research so on um, Wednesday when we create our cover images and we create our strap lines and we create our product, um, our group descriptions. You've started to get some ideas, but your task today is to do the template and to come back into the group and share some name ideas that you've come up with based on the work that you've done from the template. So I'm going to go because I've tried really hard to keep it, but I'm not great at timekeeping, by the way. Um, I've tried really hard to keep this just to 30 minutes. If you've got any questions, you can ask them now or you can put them in the group under this thread so that we can try and keep everything in the same places to make it easier for us all. If you're watching this on replay, Feel free to drop a hashtag replay so that I know you've watched and ask any questions. I will keep checking back later in the day um, to answer. But now is the time while I'm here if you want to ask any questions live about anything that I've just said. And I think, oh, the other thing I want to say is if you haven't yet 
um, got Canva and you don't know how to create an image for your group, a cover image for your group, go and download Canva and have a little look. You can you can set it gives you the exact template, the exact size because Facebook page is really and um, Facebook groups have a particular size cover image. And if you don't use a template, I know other apps are available, but I just don't know the ins and outs of other apps. But Canva, you can create a cover image using a template which will fit exactly the right size. So you know that it's not going to be stretched out and people can't read it on their phone, etc. It's going to be clear. Okay, questions. Andrea says, um, let's just pop this up here. Andrea said, I've previously been invited, advised to make everything across my business the same so the brand is instantly recognisable. In terms of um, your colours, etc., yes, um, Andrea. So keeping your colours the same. So you'll see on mine, if you want to go and have a look for purposes of seeing what I mean, demonstrating, you'll see my Clarity Club um, imagery, the colours, the fonts that I use are the fonts that I use in all of my business, the colours selection that I use in my business colours, um, and the imagery that I use as part of the image package that um, I use across all my platforms, okay? So don't, that's what you need to keep consistent for your brand to be recognisable. So when you create your cover image, Use your brand fonts, use your brand colors, use your brand images in terms of images that fit with your brand, but you don't have to use exactly the same thing on everything. So it all looks the same. Okay. Um, this, here we go, another question here. Does Facebook pick up keywords in the about your group? Uh, it does use the key, it does use the words you put in your description, yes. For SEO purposes, and we'll talk about that on day three. So, yes, when you write your description, you do need to think carefully about the wording that you use. Michelle says we have to have our forename as a minimum in any pages and groups. Okay, so maybe you just have the name on your cover image, maybe you have your name on your cover image. I'm not sure if we can get away with that. Um, Michelle, maybe we need to ask HQ for you guys, but if you have your title doesn't have your name in, but the cover image for your group can have your your group's name and then with Michelle Harrington or something like that. So you might choose like, you know, skincare solutions for busy mums with Michelle Harrington on your cover image. So that's really clear. Because when everybody, whenever anyone searches a group, they'll see your cover image. So hopefully that makes it passable. We'll find out. Um, any other questions before I go? I don't think there's anything else coming up. If you think of any other questions, then let me know. Um, I'm going to check back in the comments and see who was the winner of getting on here first and saying flamingo um so tomorrow i'm going to put another one up see who gets in here first tomorrow at 10 a.m and i'll put a different word up that you have to say so look out for that post and finally you can keep adding people to this group i'm not going to close this group until next monday so they'll even if they don't come in straight away they'll have time to catch up um, and everybody who adds people into the group gets entered into a prize draw to win a coaching session or a place on one of my other um, training groups. So I'm going to draw that, do the draw for that on Wednesday. OK, I'm going to go. Have a lovely rest of your day. Enjoy the sunny weather and I'll see you all tomorrow at 10 a.m. Bye.